Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. That sounded weird. That sounded really weird. What was that? Is that what Santa Creepy sounds like? Santa. I don't want him coming into my house. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he sounds like <laughs> in my head, apparently. Uh, hello, it's Dave here again with my wife, Kathy, for a very special cinema, a Christmas edition. Hello, happy Christmas. We are going to go see It's a Wonderful Life, which, believe it or not, neither of us have ever seen before. Yes, yeah, so um, it's weird that we haven't seen it. We know that. Um, we watch a lot of movies we love Christmas movies and I, I think I've been thinking about why we've never seen it and I think partially it's because we've seen it so many times in parody form I've definitely seen the yeah. ending before it's in the background of other Christmas movies so it's one of those ones that I always think oh well, I've kind of seen it but um, the Dalston Rio cinema which is a really cool beautiful cinema is showing it today at 4 o'clock Sunday the 18th of December so it felt like the perfect time for us to go see it yes one week to Christmas today um, yeah same I feel like I just feel like I've seen it I know but I've, I haven't we haven't so how have we not seen it have we made it this far through our lives without ever having like caught it on TV or something but I'm I sure th- I've even caught bits of it I've, like, I, I know the plot right I know it's like Jimmy Stewart yeah he's feeling bad about life and the village comes together and helps him realise how wonderful his life is well I think that's a bit of an understatement he's feeling bad about well, life isn't suicidal. he actually about to kill himself I think so but it's 1946 right so I doubt that that's actually very explicit though maybe it is I'm maybe um, maybe I'll be shocked well you don't know because you haven't maybe seen maybe there'll be like it. a really hardcore suicide scene at the start <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very gritty it's a real gritty edgy movie I believe yeah but yeah, we're feeling festive, we're really excited, and we wanted to do a Christmas episode anyway, so this feels like the perfect movie to do it with. So the absolute gauntlet for this movie, the challenge which we are setting, is that it has to make us cry. I didn't set that challenge. I thi- I'm setting it. Oh, you're setting I'm it. Well, down. I'll cry anyway, because I cry... At, like, you, you, well, you're easy to make cry. I cry at Star Wars, so... You cried at, at Star Wars, you didn't even care about it. Yeah. Uh, you, you can, you could, I've seen you cry at ads. Yeah, so I'll cry. Um, very easy to make you cry. But I'm expecting I, a lot of tears in this one, though. I need genuine... Uh, I need genuine crying moments in this movie or I'm or I'm done but what if it's a really good movie and you just happen to not cry no but that's the whole point of It's a Wonderful Life isn't it it's, supposed to, it's all about the tears I mean I have no doubt you'll cry anyway so that's fine but I'm just excited I love Jimmy Stewart I love watching an old black and white movie we might get like some mulled wine or some hot chocolate to bring yeah. with us such a beautiful cinema we used to live next to it and go all the time but we haven't been in like a year so we're getting the train now which means we're not finishing this right before we get into the cinema and then there'll be a break before we come out and we're going with two friends of ours so it should be really fun um so yeah excited All right. we'll see you soon okay bye it is a wonderful life isn't it <laughs> yeah Yay! hello bedford Ford! merry christmas merry, merry christmas, christmas! merry christmas George. merry christmas movie house merry christmas emporium Merry Christmas, you wonderful old building alone! Right, we are we're waiting on the train platform. Uh, we just came out of It's a Wonderful Life. Um, well, we came out with our friends, um, Colm and Ethna, but they had to leave. So we are now waiting for the train. We've got 30 minutes till our train, so we're going to do this. Um, that was brilliant. Brilliant, loved I it. was a blubbering mess. Complete success, Complete movie. Complete success. They um they brought for some reason they put the lights on about like five minutes before it ended. And <laughs> well, then, no, it was when they were singing "O Lang Syne," so it was, right, it was well, peak emotion. Whatever, it was like the the lights came on and then I realized we were we could all see each other's wet faces, <laughs> uh, which was slightly embarrassing. Um, but yeah, what a what a beautiful movie. Oh, I loved it so much. Just absolutely, and I just it kept getting me like I I choked up like every like thirty seconds for the last five minutes. It was just beautiful it was all it's like it's all in the payoff really I mean that you watch it's slightly longer than I expected it's about an hour and a half of uh, just kind of just his life and it really goes into well it kind of just goes into George's whole life and it's all sort of setting up for this big punchline which is what would happen if he wasn't there and you kind of need you need the you need each of those original scenes to see how everyone's lives would be oh, affected. Oh, completely. And normally, you know, like, I'm a really big criticiser of long movies, like movies that are too long. I think most movies don't warrant a long duration and most movies suffer for being over two hours. But this movie, I thought, earned every minute of itself because 
what it did was it was a slow build it was you know very gently um showing us his life you know just the constant his constant kind of battle between trying to be the perfect guy and do what's right for everyone and his inner desire to to leave the town to travel to he wants to be an architect he wants to build bridges and it was a constant battle between those two things and what kept winning out was his obligation and his morals and the fact that he's like you know a really good self-sacrificing guy and I mean you feel so you you feel for him so much and every little thing is just like kind of knocking him down ever so much and and then by the end and I don't think it's a spoiler you know turn off now if you haven't heard of or haven't seen It's a Wonderful Life but at the end when when they do see, show what his life what would have happened if he'd never been born it was really incredible to see the impact he had on all those people just from being you know a solid dependable smart nice guy and I just thought the payoff was so beautiful when everyone in the town came in and like got him out of the hole he was in and they all like you know they did their best for him as he had done for like them tearing up thinking yeah about it's it. just beautiful um, and it just warranted every minute of I was never once bored I'm so glad that we saw it in the cinema for the first time we didn't like watch it at home where we might have been pausing it because it was a bit long and um, it was just a beautiful experience and you know there's genuine laughs in it one of the things I really loved was the character of Mary his wife because like this movie was made in 1946 I think it was very progressive for when it was made first of all like um Look, my knowledge of older movies isn't amazing, but at a point where they freeze frame him and the angels are talking about him. So that seemed like a very modern thing. I Well, probably because a lot of modern conventions maybe uh, were taken from yeah. that movie. This, I, I, would, I, I don't know, but I would imagine this is the first time a lot of those kind of techniques yeah, was were like used. It really surprised me. And um, what also really surprised me was that I know in the 50s in America there was law around cinema where you had to show a married couple um, very obviously you had to show like two single beds so in a movie like Rebel Without a Cause for example you would see that his I think that is my recollection from film studies that his parents were in two single beds but in this movie they showed him and his wife actually in a loving marital relationship they were in a bed together he was kissing her and what amazed me about her was that she was actually she was his backbone and she was the one who you know made him realize what they could be together as a couple she's the one who sacrificed her honeymoon movie um to help him in the bank or her honeymoon money sorry to help him in the bank she's the one who raised the kids when he was never there she's the one who wallpapered and basically built the house which again for like a movie in 1946 was pretty amazing they showed us that she did all the diy and then at the end she's the one who rallied all the neighbors around to give him the money yeah so like she was incredible and they felt like such a partnership it didn't feel like a movie from that era where the women are so sidelined and you just love them to, I just I have to say when they kissed it was weird they were it was a weird kiss that they had it was like just looked very uncomfortable but that aside I just love them as, as an on-screen couple I thought the scene just before they get married was, was sort of odd where he basically goes <laughs> he's trying to resist her the whole time yeah he's horrible to her he's kind of horrible to her um, and then he just like grabs her and shakes her and shouts in her face, I don't want to get married. And then the next scene was them getting married, which was kind of strange. But it was a very powerful day for him because he basically, and like someone say foolishly, like he, I think he went a bit over the top being a martyr, but he, when his dad died, he took over the family business so that it wouldn't go under. And he then gave all of his college money that he'd spent four years saving to his little brother to go to college. And he's waiting for the brother to come back that day and take over the family business. And he realises the brother's not taking over the family business. And he's he's been waiting for this moment for four years mm. for him to finally be able to break free so I guess but he wanted his brother to be happy he wanted his brother to be happy and in that moment I think he realised when he was with Mary that he loved her so much he wanted to stay and marry her and again that was him him letting go of yet another dream which was that he was you know in that day right. he, he, he lost a lot so he was angry because he did want uh, to be with Mary but he could tell that it was he could see the sacrifice that he was going to have to make but I think he already had to, to make it because of the brother not, unless he was willing to give up the family business yeah. but, and again he knew the brother would do it but he, he would never compel somebody to do that don't you think though in this day and age that this movie's message just rings so true yeah. it's very it's very anti um Capitalism, yeah, really which I, I really uh, admire. Like he's basically it, running like a credit union. He's not really running a. It's bank. all about community, yeah. and, and and I think particularly the way America is at at the moment, the way communities are just being wiped out mm-hmm. by big business. Um, they're being wiped out by the recession. Um, this would make this actually makes a really interesting double bill with Hell or High Water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one is a lot more optimistic <laughs> than the other. Um, but what did you think about what I thought was hilarious was that. Um, 
It is a little bit on the nose, but it was, you know, it needs to be done if you're going to say you were never born and everything's dramatically different. So when he was never born, the town was called after the baddie Pottersville Pottersville and it was just a basically a strip club row well, that was the high street <laughs> it was just strip clubs did um, maybe this is uh, deliberate but I felt like um, it was exactly what happens in Back to the Future 2 yeah uh, when uh, uh, George is George is killed in an alternate and there's an alternate timeline where Marty never existed and Biff like runs the town and it's a strip joint yeah. and he's the richest man in town it's very similar so that maybe that's a little homage to It's a Wonderful because yeah, it's almost kind of like a time travel thing but not and um, I have to say like the town villain I really enjoyed him he was excellent yeah, he was Every, really good the, so many good performances yeah. in this like, and I love that he genuinely like he 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 basically I know the uncle accidentally gives him the money but he steals the money and then he calls the cops on him yeah like that's villainous oh yeah yeah he was a brilliant villain and you know when he he offers George he says what do you earn a week? And George is like, I earn four, $45 a week. So he earns what? He earns about two and a half grand a year max. And he offers him 20 grand a year yeah. to work for him. Now that's, you know, a 10, 10, 10 times salary jump. It's astronomical money back in those days. And I just love George. George was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like he had a very strong moral background. And I thought it was really interesting at the end when he was essentially having his nervous breakdown just thought I can see how this has happened because this guy he's been too selfless his whole life and he's just done too many things for other people and at the point where he can't even see like it was a terrible thing to watch him because you, you get the impression he's a really good dad it was a terrible thing to watch him screaming at his children yeah. frightening them like it, you really felt like he but, was and you, but you could see the instant regret in yeah. his eyes and he tries to undo those moves but he was terrifying and like he was in the, in the midst of a mental breakdown that's what Jimmy Stewart played this he's so, good. so well the, the, the range of emotions that and he's just, just a, such a believable character George Bailey and you just love him and I love and you sort of fall in love with all the little characters in the community like, yeah, they like were his really well established uncle um, who and like you could see the slip up with the money coming a mile off and I was like oh no don't do it Um, did you notice um, a couple of technical things I saw a few times a cut out of weird jump cuts were were interesting I wonder what happened there Um, and it was fun watching a movie in 4-3 yeah I don't know if I've ever seen a movie in 4-3 well that's how movies would have been shot I guess originally yeah though I would have Um, thought yeah and it was really fun to see it in the Rio cinema which is like yeah I think we can get on the train doing this Um, I have to say uh, shout out to Lee Gant a friend of the show who was so excited that we were coming to see this and hadn't seen it before that he decided to watch it at the exact same time as us at home um, which is a very impressive commitment <laughs> that's so funny and he um, he promised to right, we have to get a bit quieter when we get on the train ok we're getting on the train now he promised to um, uh, text me a fact about the movie um, which we might not know and that was that Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street um, were allegedly named after the the characters of the police officer. Oh, and, that's so funny! Because the, the I had, had yeah, yeah the whole very, cinema laughed at that point. We all sort of laughed. We did did acknowledge it. Uh, Lee said that apparently the producers denied, or a producer of It's a Wonderful Life has denied that, um, but Lee maintains that it's true. And I also choose to believe it because I they're both it. unmarried bachelors and they have kind of a very affectionate relationship. Yeah. It's, too, um, so it's too coincidental. We have to say something really funny about how the fact that um, Jimmy Stewart kissed his own mother on the lips a few times. Yeah. Which well, is just at least a symbol once. of the times, which yeah. made me laugh. Is that what, was that the done, the done thing back then? I don't... Well, you Just give her an old smack on the lips? They made the movie in 1946 and they didn't think anything of it because they did it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so so fun to watch a movie that old in black and white in a lovely little cinema with friends who we haven't seen like we haven't seen column that we went to with it in what like two and a half years since our wedding yeah and we'd never met his girlfriend he was lovely so that was, it was just a really nice day and everyone just really enjoyed it and we all wept profusely at the end when yeah. they sang Auld Lang Syne it's beautiful it's just a lovely lovely movie yeah. it's so heartwarming interestingly I was surprised that how little of it is actually set at Christmas I know so I guess it is I guess it's just technically a Christmas movie because the end is very Christmassy. Yeah, but why I mean, are they singing it all Lang Syne? That's a New Year's song. 
because well they first of all they did sing a Christmas song and then I think Old Lang Syne's very appropriate because it's about um, you know don't forget your old friends and you know it's all yeah, down to George true. Bailey that those people have roofs over their head and you know that they have the businesses they have and the lives they have and it was just so like I felt very moved by it at the end I can like it's you can just now see why it's like number, the number one Christmas classic I would absolutely watch that yeah. again next oh, year and every year I don't year. think well me and Dave have this disagreement because I don't like watching the same Christmas movies every year I like to no. do a few years like we watched Home Alone last year so I'm not watching yeah, it just this, year. this morning I was like let's watch Home Alone again and you were like no yeah um and Die Hard I want to watch Die Hard yeah but we watched that last year as well so it's too soon for me okay so I'll give It's a Wonderful Life a go maybe in two to three years again okay yeah so check back in in two to three years <laughs> yeah. we'll review it again and see if it holds up yeah right let's leave it there yeah the train's um, getting busier so you can follow us on so, um, Twitter at the Cinema. let us know what your favourite Christmas movie is maybe we'll put a poll up on oh, Twitter oh yeah that's fun let's do uh, that let's pick, pick four Christmas movies and um and yeah, or uh, Merry email Christmas. us at uh, thecinemile at gmail.com or we're on Facebook at the cinema. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, you're plugging everyone. us so we need to be saying Merry Christmas yeah, and um, thank you for listening yeah, shout this out year. to Christmas. Yeah. A uh, very famous holiday. Dave loves shouting out to things. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening all year. We're so happy that people listen to us and we appreciate every comment and download we get. Yes. And hope that you watch lots Thanks, of everyone. good Christmas movies. Yeah, and eat lots of food and drink and, you know, all that. All that stuff. All that stuff. Okay, bye.